Hello and welcome to Common Command's first episode of Common Clash. Common Clash is a series dedicated to short, edited commander gameplay from the top point of view with narration over the video. And just to be clear, this video was recorded before Miss Rona happened, so make sure to keep yourself safe and follow all social distancing guidelines. Before we get into the video, I want to remind you that Common Command is giving away free cards and magic products, so stay to the end of the video to find out how to enter and win. We also have a Patreon, so be sure to check it out and all the amazing benefits that come with joining. Alright, enough stalling. Let's get into the game. Alright, let's meet our players. Today I am playing my Villas Reanimator deck and I keep an opening hand of 3 Swamps, Dreadhorn Invasion, Greed, Thran Dynamo, and Bolas' Citadel. Next we have Moises and he's playing the Heavy Eternal. He keeps a hand of 3 Mountains, Faithless Looting, Gilded Lotus, Commander Sphere, and Jaya Ballard Task Mage. Nick is playing Muldrotha and he has a hand of a Forest, Thespian Stage, Temple of Milady, Simic Signet, Deadeye Navigator, Buried Alive, and Tygon Scheming. Last we have Angela and she's playing Cedri Galvanic Genius and she keeps a hand of Evil Twin, Seat of the Synod, Orbs of Signet, Shimmer Mirror, Karmic Justice, Nimbus Maze, and a Swamp. She wins the die roll and starts off the game. And now it's Reptar. Reptar! Reptar rating! <laughs> After our pre-game singing ritual, Angela starts turn 1 with a Swamp and passes over to Nick. Nick plays a Temple of Milady after drawing, but it's a little too high up his map. Put it back here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I draw, and I play a Swamp, and I pass. Moises draws, he plays a Mountain and decides to pass, but Angela strikes again, pushing the land down his map. Moises then casts Faithless Looting in Retaliation, before giving it over to Angela, drawing two cards, discarding two cards, and ends turn one. Angela draws and plays a Seed of the Synod and then casts an Orvzov Signet. After passing, Nick draws for turn, he drops a Forest, and he casts his own Signet with Simic Signet. He passes over to me. After I draw and play my Swamp, I cast a Dreadhorde Invasion, all ready for a game of pain. I then pass over to Moises. Moises draws, he plays a Mountain, and he passes over to Angela. Angela starts turn 3 off with a Rhystic Study. All satisfied, she passes to Nick. After Nick draws, he casts a Tygon Scheming, dumping some cards into his graveyard. He then passes. On my turn, I play a Swamp after taking one from amassing and cast a Jet Medallion. I have nothing left, so I pass to Moises. Moises plays a Spine Rock Knoll after drawing and hides away a card, but not before kicking my tripod. With nothing left, he passes the turn. Angela untaps and draws and plays yet another foil card, Nimbus's Maze, and follows up with a foil Karmic Justice. She then passes to Nick. Before Nick starts his turn, she shows off her commander though. Nick plays a Watery Grave entering it tapped and then proceeds to cast a Courser of Crufix, paying an extra one for the study. At this point we make a little mistake and Nick plays a Mossware Bridge off the top of his deck forgetting he had just played the Watery Grave. His hideaway card did not impact the game so nothing to worry about here. He then passes the turn. I start my turn by amassing one and drawing. I then tap four for a Thran Dynamo letting Angela draw from the study. But that draw comes with the payment as I then swing my 2-2 zombie army token at her. I pass over to Moises. Moises uses his turn to cast a commander sphere letting Angela draw. He passes over to Angela. Angela plays a Vault of Whispers as her land for turn after drawing and casts a shiny Aetherflux Reservoir. She passes to Nick. Why is it out? That got to go. Yeah, Nick untaps and draws and plays a Thespian Stage Return, gaining one life from the Courser of Crufix. He then casts an Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. He gains three life, draws a card, and then has to sacrifice it. He then plays a Search for Ascanta and passes. On my turn, I lose one and amass one once again and bring out that boy, Villas, for seven mana, letting Angela draw. 
I then swing my zombie at Moises for three and end my turn. E at Moises. <laughs> Not bad. Moises plays a mountain and casts a Gilded Lotus followed by a Cryptolith Fragment, letting Angela draw two cards from the study. He passes and we move on to turn six. draws and plays yet another foil land and discusses how much better her lands are than Nick's. Are these lands better than these lands? She then pays 3 mana and 2 life to cast Phyrexian Metamorph and decides to make a copy of my Phyllis, gaining one in the process from her 8 Deflex Reservoir. After that, she passes. Nick draws and reveals a myriad landscape off the top of his library and plays it off the top. He gains another life. He then taps 7 mana, paying 1 from the study tax to cast Moldrotha. He then swings his courser at Moises for 2 damage. Two sure. On my upkeep, I lose 1 life and amass 1, getting to draw from the life loss with Villas. I then draw for turn and cast Bolus's Citadel, floating 1 and not paying for the study in hopes that the draw Angela gets would allow it to resolve. It resolves and I play a swamp from the top of my library. I then use my floating mana and a swamp to cast an Altar of Dementia, letting Angela draw again. I move to combat and swing 4 at Moises with my zombie token and after combat sacrifice it to mill myself for 4. I then pay 2 life and a swamp to activate Villas to give Moldrotha minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn and draw 2 cards. After seeing that there is another land on top, I sadly pass the turn. Moises untaps and draws for turn. He pays 6 mana, pinging everyone for 1 with a cryptlet fragment, allowing Angela and I to draw to cast a Dreamstone Hedron, and Angela draws another card from the study. Hedron? Wow, you are rampant. What are you doing? Dreamstone Hedron? He plays a mountain and pays 6 for his general in the Heb and pays 1 for the study. On his end step, Angela casts a Shimmerir, gaining 1 from the Aetherflux. Angela untaps and plays a Reliquary Tower for turn. She pays 7 for a foil Memnarch, showing the table just how much better her cards are. Okay, that's a pretty foil Memnarch you got there. She gains a life from the Aether Flux and moves to combat, hitting Nick for 8 with her copied Villas. Nick untaps and draws his villainous wealth off the top and reveals an Eternal Witness. He plays a land from his graveyard with Moldrotha and gains 1 life. He then pays 6 into the X of Villainous Wealth, targeting Angela, allowing her to draw first. Mm, I know what he's doing. Villainous Wealth. He then reveals a Chroma Memorial, Crib Swap, Path to Exile, Wrath of God, Fabricate, and Dark Steel Citadel from the Villainous Wealth. He exiles Angela's Phyrexian Metamorph with Path to Exile and her Shimmermere with Crib Swap. He follows up with Angela's Wrath of God, and in response, I mill myself for 8 by sacrificing Villas to the altar and let Villas stay in the graveyard. Angela then gets to destroy Nick's search for Ascanta with her Karmic Justice as her Memnarch is destroyed. Nick finally casts Fabricate and searches for a Neveraw's Disc as Angela draws 4 cards from Nick playing all 4 spells. He then passes. Again, I begin my turn by amassing 1 and losing 1 life. I draw for turn and pay only 1 mana for an animate dead, targeting and bringing back Phyllis from the graveyard. I then cast a Treacherous Blessing, not paying the Rhystic Study again, letting Angela draw. For each other spell this turn, Treacherous Blessing would do 1 damage to me and I will draw 1 card as long as Phyllis is on the battlefield. That being said, I pay 1 life to cast a Way for his Bauble from the top of my library, taking an extra 1 and drawing 2 cards. I then pay 5 life to cast Edric Sar, Master Breeder, off the top of my library, drawing 6 cards and this time letting Angela draw 1. I then pay 2 mana to cast Zulaport Cutthroat, denying Angela the draw as I draw 1 card myself. Edric also makes 2 Thrall tokens. I then pay 7 life to cast Kyrick, Son of Yagmoth, from the top of my library, losing 8 life but drawing 8 cards and making 8 more Thrall tokens. I then have to sacrifice Edric but ping everyone for 1 and I gain 1 as Zulaport sees Edric die. I then cast Victimize from the top of my library by paying 3 life, losing an additional 1 to and end up drawing 4 cards. I sacrifice a Thrall token, draining everyone for 1 and gaining 1 as I bring back Zidisi, Undead Vizier, and Kakusho, the Evening Star, from my graveyard. 
I sacrificed another thrill token with Sadisi's exploit triggered. At this point, Angela encourages me to mill myself as I have drawn a ton of cards, but instead I pay one life to cast a bubbling mug from the top of my library, losing another one and drawing two cards because of the blessing enchantment. I then cast Ashnod's Altar, losing a life but drawing once again. Burnt Offering is cast and I sacrifice Kakusha to it, losing 1 but draining everyone for 5 and 1 from the Zulaport, and I gain 16 life. I gain 6 mana and then you guys are all going to lose 5 and I'm going to gain 15. I then get my 6 black mana and use it to cast Liliana Death's Majesty, losing another life but drawing another card. I down tick her to bring back my Edric, but before that happens, I sacrifice all my Thrill tokens to my altar, making 14 colorless mana and draining everyone for 7 as I gain 7. With all this colorless mana and Kyrick able to pay for black mana, I then cast Grey Merchant and Vashvidel, draining everyone for 20 and then sacrifice the rest of my Thrill tokens made by Edric from off the carry to finally end the game. Nice. Yep. Let's game. Yep. Yeah, that deck is ridiculous, man. Good game. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Good game. My hand. Man, what a game. Billis did exactly what I wanted. Generate just small increments of value until I saw my opportunity. Bolus the Citadel was definitely key for me because it helped me get most of the cards I played out from my deck and drew me cards. Nick and Angela both were building themselves up and were in the running to go off, but after Nick casted Angela's Wrath of God, I just was too easily able to recover. Moises' in the Heb deck is definitely nasty, but unfortunately this game he was just a tad slower than everyone else on the table. He definitely was setting up for something explosive, so hopefully we can get another game with him featuring the deck. Now before we reveal the giveaway items, I just wanted to let you know that we also have a Patreon. We have a ton of amazing benefits for being a Patreon, so make sure to give it a look. The way to enter the giveaway is simple. All you need to do is like the video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment. This giveaway will last up until June 8th, which is when we will randomly choose our winning subscribers. Now let's go over the prizes. The cards we will be giving away are from our collector box opening, so make sure to check it out. We had some nasty pulls and are giving away a foil Zerda the Dawn Waker, a foil Whirlwind of Thought, an amazing box topper Ozolith. Along with these cards, we will also be giving away a giant D20 dice, a pack of Dragon Shield art mat sleeves featuring Dragon of Liberty, and one Liliana Dreadhorde General stained glass art wall scroll. So if any of these prizes sound interesting, be sure to subscribe and comment. Good luck to everyone who enters, and we'll catch you in the next video.